Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss the principles of antenatal care and we'll start by defining what is antenatal care. Antenatal is a planned program of observation, education and medical management of pregnant women directed towards making pregnancy a safe and satisfying experience. The principles of management include the ability to predict problems on the basis of medical, social and obstetric history and physical examination, to prevent or reduce the severity of problems by prophylactic measures, to detect and treat conditions which have harmful effects on the mother or the fetus, and to provide education, information, and reassurance for the mother and the partner. So we'll look at what happens during the booking clinic of antenatal. This is when the assessment of risk begins. When the woman is seen by either a midwife, a CEO, or a doctor, it, it, it doesn't matter because in our, in, in our setup, we have different types of people that run clinics. And anyone at the clinic, of course, a health practitioner, can get to see the woman. So the first visit, ideally, should, should happen as soon as a woman is pregnant, but most of the time that is not possible. So the first visit usually happens around 12 weeks, but we hope that it doesn't happen later than 16 weeks. But at times in our setting, you find that women come to the clinic, maybe even at 30 weeks, 32 weeks, 36 weeks, some of them come having never had attended any antenatal care. They come at the time of delivery. And our duty, our job, is to receive them anyhow. So, during the routine booking, we do the, the administrative details, you know. How old is she? What is her marital status? Uh, is it the first pregnancy, the fourth pregnancy? Uh, you get an accurate menstrual history, if you can. Uh, you get a medical history, uh, an examination, and you do the basic investigations such as a full blood count, a, a hemoglobinopathy, you know, you're checking for sickle cell, uh, you check what is a blood group, you check for uh, venereal, venereal diseases such as syphilis, hepatitis B, HIV. Our approach to HIV is provider-initiated, tested and counseling meaning you, the provider, will initiate the discussion surrounding HIV. You do a midstream urine for culture and sensitivity, and you start your intermittent presumptive treatment with the antimalarials. The antimalarials in this case, the most common one that we use is, is Fancida. Take note that we're calling it intermittent presumptive treatment. So where this is not prophylaxis because uh, IPT sometimes is confused with prophylaxis but actually in this case in a woman that is pregnant we are actually presuming presuming that she's got malaria so we are treating that malaria we give the fancy down every month up to the time that she delivers so you find that if you start at 16 weeks you have to give fancy down at least four times eh, up to the time that she delivers you also give the iron and folic acid supplements the folic acid you can start as soon as she comes to the first visit the iron tablets you may you may want to be a little bit cautious because in the first trimester in the first uh, in the first in the early days of pregnancy the woman may have the problems of nausea and vomiting and the ferrous has got that metallic taste and it may exacerbate the nausea and vomiting. So, you know, you may want to start your, uh, your ferrous maybe after 16 weeks when the nausea and vomiting has subsidized. Another thing you need to start discussing early in pregnancy is the place of delivery. Where is she going to deliver? Are you going to deliver at your 
at your clinic or does she need to go to a hospital to a place where there is a, a facility for for cesarean section those decisions you need to make them early so how do you make that decision what criteria do you take into consideration to decide whether you're going to deliver her at the clinic or she has to be referred this is a big thing in our in our setting because you know the Ministry of Health has even come up with some referral guidelines that give us specific women that can be delivered by a midwife and which women are supposed to be delivered in a tertiary institution in a tertiary institution quite right they can still be delivered by a midwife but they support there's the support of a theater and other uh, specialized care so for example a woman with an obvious large baby uh, you don't want to deliver uh, you don't want to deliver at your local clinic a woman with high parity uh, high parity in this case we're talking about a woman who's had five and above births uh, someone who's had five and above births is considered to be high parity what is a birth is any delivery that has gone beyond 28 weeks beyond the age of viability that is a birth whether the baby was born dead or the baby was born alive it is counted as a birth women with hypertensive disorders uh, previous cesarean section very important previous cesarean section should not be delivered at the local clinic without facilities for cesarean section because they are at high risk of rupturing very young women under age below 16 years of age elderly prime gravida you know women who are 35 38 40 years and above you find that uh, they may have a history of difficulties conceiving so you want them to give them the best chance possible for that baby that they're going to have so you may not want to deliver them alone at a, at a, at a lower level facility. Multiple pregnancies, multiple pregnancies come with a lot of complications. Uh, right from the first trimester, the vomiting is worse, the nausea is worse, the risk of preterm delivery, uh, the the risk of hypertension all the problems that you would consider in a in in a normal pregnancy are sort of exacerbated in in multiple pregnancy delivery itself is even more complicated uh, the risk of pph is high so you don't want to deliver a uh, such a patient at a lower level facility transverse lie uh, transverse lie there is an illustration here of a of a transverse lie this baby cannot come out eh? a transverse lie cannot come out so the only way that you're going to deliver a transverse lie is through an operation and of course it cannot be done at your facility bad obstetric history eh, recurrent miscarriages eh, someone who's had a previous stillbirth and someone who's had post deaths all these women it is better if you deliver them at your uh, at your at your higher level facility so antenatal care has gone through an evolution eh? uh, at the in the earlier days maybe around 2006 2007 2008 we had what was known as focused antenatal care but from 2016 there was what 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 we are practicing now and what has been adopted by the Ministry of Health from the World Health Organization is uh, the new antenatal care model, <coughs> the WHO antenatal care model. The main difference between the two is that the focused antenatal care had four visits and the WHO model has eight visits. Yeah, we may not manage to have all the eight visits as of now but it is and it is it has been adopted and that is what we are aiming to achieve what i want to mention here about the four visits or eight visits is that uh, the change from four visits to eight visits is good 
but uh, what is more important is the quality of the antenatal care that we offer at each visit. Remember, the whole practice of obstetrics is someone to monitor that pregnancy all the time. So when they come to the antenatal clinic, whether they come eight times or they come four times, in some countries, they even go 13 times. What is important for us is that at the time that a woman comes, there should be a midwife or there should be a trained person who knows what they are doing to be able to examine and to be able to detect complications and to be able to know what to do about those complications. And there should be the tools and other amenities, you know, like your folic acid, your fancy da, your facilities for HB, all those should be there at Antinendo, at the Antinendo clinic. So whether you have 8 or 14 visits, what is important is that the amenities, the facilities, and the skilled uh, labor, that the skilled manpower at the facility is, is there. Otherwise, a woman will be visiting eight times without finding a midwife there. It becomes pointless, of course. So every time that a woman comes, the minimum should be done. You know, like a urine, a blood pressure. A, 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 in some instances, you may find challenges with BP machines, but blood pressure should be done always. Eh? Eh, you, you examine for edema. You examine the women, checking the, the fundal height, the lie, the presentation. Uh, you ask if she's having vaginal bleeding. Uh, you ask, you check the urine for proteinuria. Uh, you screen for infections such as UTI and so forth. All these, all these routine assessments should be done for the eight visits to make sense. And also I want to mention to talk about ultrasound, which really is a revolution in modern antenatal practice. Um, it helps us to assess women that are bleeding. You'll notice that when women are bleeding in pregnancy, we cannot assess with a, a vaginal exam, a, a digital vaginal exam. An ultrasound assessment comes in very handy when the when you cannot examine the when you cannot examine with your with your fingers of course so you know you'll be able to rule out whether it is a previa or it is an abrupt show and so forth ultrasound also will help you to accurately determine the gestation age especially if you do it especially if you do it in the first trimester because you know more than 40 percent of the women are not very sure of their uh, of their last menstrual period and the ultrasound is an, a very important tool for us to assess the gestation age. You want to exclude multiple pregnancy. Sometimes it may not be possible with the uh, physical examination to know whether or not there is a multiple pregnancy. And you want to exclude congenital anomalies. You also want to check the size of the baby. Uh, it also helps you to monitor the growth of the baby and the determination of the presentation. Sometimes it may be difficult. You don't know if it is a first presentation, if it is a if it is a breach. The ultrasound may be helpful. The weight of the baby, you know, at the end of the pregnancy, yeah, is it is it three point eight? Is it four kg? gives you an idea whether or not you want to try a vaginal delivery or maybe you just want to go straight for caesarean section so ultrasound ultrasound is an important tool to help us manage pregnancy so when should you offer it at least if you can offer it in the first trimester at least around 12 weeks that would be good for you to date the pregnancy the other time that is good uh, the other time that is good to offer ultrasound is around 20 to 22 weeks because at that time the baby is well formed and you can determine whether or not there are anomalies. So a first scan at around 12 weeks is good for dating. Another scan at around 20 to 22 weeks is good for checking uh, 
for congenital anomalies it is known as an anomaly scan so antenatal care has been proven really to reduce maternal and fetal morbidity and mortality many studies have been done to that effect quality of antenatal care is infinitely superior to the quantity of antenatal care and every woman should be offered at least one ultrasound at least one ultrasound during the antenatal care so that is what i had on the principles of antenatal care uh, thanks for listening and i'll see you in the next one